In this lesson, we're going to create a courier post domestic delivery from scratch using eShip. Click Create Order, and then input the references. These two reference fields will appear on any reporting or invoices sent to you by New Zealand Post, and can be used to look up the shipment later in eShip, which makes them very helpful for tracking and reconciliation. Order number is a unique value associated with this delivery. eShip automatically creates one for you, but you can change it to match a reference from your own ordering system. This reference is also printed on the label. The reference number can be used for any additional reference value you like. It doesn't have to be unique either. This could be used to store a cost center or add an internal note. This reference value is not printed on the label either. Next, we input the receiver's address details. Click into the lookup address field and start typing. eShip will search for matching addresses from the New Zealand Post address database. Simply select the one you're after once it appears on screen. Then all of the relevant fields below will be populated. Now I just need to add the receiver's name. Optionally, I can add the receiver's email. This is used for tracking notifications that can be sent to the customer. The same applies to phone. Phone will be printed on the ticket and can be used to send SMS notifications to the customer. You can include the receiver's company name, additional information about the building, and deliver instructions on the right. Finally, if you click Save as Contact to Address Book, you'll be able to look up this receiver for future deliveries. To do this, simply go up to Lookup Address and change it to Lookup Contact. Then type in either the receiver name, company, or receiver code which is something you can assign to a receiver via the address book page. I'm going to look up Susan. As before, search results appear on screen, click the one you're after, and all the fields will be populated. Easy. Now let's click Next. The Items section is used to describe the items inside your delivery for international customs declaration, but we can leave this blank for a domestic delivery, so let's move on to parcel sizes. This is a list of default parcel size that I've created. You can set up your own parcel sizes via the settings menu. To proceed, select the parcel from the list. I've already got big box selected. Then you can update the weight and dimensions as needed. Any changes you make to parcel sizes and weights here are not saved permanently. You can also add a temporary custom box if needed. Finally, if you wish to send multiple parcels in the same shipment, you can either select additional boxes by ticking them, or you can increase the quantity of a given box to send multiple boxes of that same size. Let's send two big boxes. As you can see, pricing below has been updated accordingly. The last step is to choose courier services and additional options. You'll note that if I change to a track pack service, the parcel list changes. That's because track packs always use a specific bag size. I'm going to choose the online parcel service, which is Courier Post's overnight service. Now we select an add-on. Signature required works as you expect. If turned on, the courier will be required to collect the signature before delivering the item. Saturday can be turned on here, but please note that we still require a green sticker for Saturday deliveries. It's worth checking with your account manager to see how Saturday deliveries work. You can also add a return label. A return label can be used by the receiver to ship the exact same box back to you. This is ideal if you're sending them a replacement product and you require the original product to be returned back to you. There's another option that will also appear here sometimes, Rural. Rural will turn on automatically if you select a rural address. At any time, you can choose to save your order and continue working on it later. The order will be available under the New tab on the Order screen. Otherwise, if you're ready to generate a label, you have three options. You can click Print Labels to send the label to your assigned printer, Download to save the label as a PDF, or Email, which allows you to input an email address and have eShip send the PDF of the label to that address. I'm just going to hit Download. As you can see, my label is now downloaded. Job done.